So mm-hmm. before we even finish that trip, we're on the trip. We're planning the next trip. So yeah, we we have a lot of fun. We just we just that's focus. That's focus. My work is far enough along, and I'm doing well enough to just be able to to say, hey, it's time for me to go. And and my yeah. my job and my my employer, you know, really really take good care of me. So I can't I, I appreciate them a ton, and I work really hard when I'm there. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said for that too. You spent a long time getting to that place where you're at, mm-hmm. um, and I'm assuming with the intention of using it like you have, right? Where it's like, yeah. hey, I'm I didn't just get to this place where I'm really good at what I do. And I know my value so that I can just make some extra money. It's so that I can live some extra life. It's it's very much intentional. And I didn't I didn't necessarily learn that from from other people in my life, with the exception of um, my homeowners that I now serve with selling them the home. They're the ones that tell me don't let time go by. Yeah. So I learn it from my customers that that life is important today. And and because I sell, you know, basically 55 plus communities where, you know, they're they're living their their best life now. I get to enjoy that time with them and I get to learn from it. I, I get more out of the deal than they do. Yeah. Because I can see how I want to live my life. So very intentional every year, very intentional of what what we're going to do. You know, let's go out and have some fun. You know, we wanted, when she was in the hospital, we said we're going to New York. We said we're going to, to New Orleans. We said we were going to go to Canada. We said we're going to go to, to Northern California. We knocked all that stuff off in just a couple of years. We just went and did it. And and the memories and the things that we got we have from that, I mean, makes me better at my job because I can come back and I'm a happy guy and I can show all the my, yeah. my customers that like to travel. Check it out. I've been there too. Yeah. I feel like that's such an understated part of filling up the joy quota and making sure that your life is full of fulfillment, as cheesy as it sounds, is you're better at everything else in your life. Every single thing. Every other part of your life is benefit. It's like health. Like if you take your health even remotely serious. Mm Mm-hmm. Like if you do 80% of what it takes to be a really healthy person, Mm -hmm. every aspect of your life will benefit. And I feel like with joy quota, it's even higher percentages. Like if you meet that joy quota to where you can really feel joyful or fulfilled or both throughout a week, you're going to show up as a different person at work. You're going Mm -hmm. to show up in your relationship differently, as a parent differently, as... Yeah. Whatever your hobby is, you'll show up differently. If like with woodworking, you absolutely do it professionally, but it's on the side and it's rare at this point cuz you, you guys are just doing so much with building out Parker into this <laughs> massive place. You guys have done so much work over there. Um and Dawson's been awesome enough to take care of kind of the woodworking side, but mm-hmm. um yeah, I feel like because you have get so much joy out of woodworking it became really easy to invite me and Dawson to come join you yeah I wanted I wanted to share in that fun you know I I, I get the most joy from being around the people around the wood shop and you know one of my long-term dreams is to actually have a place where it's a co-op where people can come and share and and have a good time and you know love on one another and and design and create and just really have a great kind of co-op scenario Dude, he's in the compound. He's in the compound. Yes. Does, he, does he know he about the compound? He has no idea. I don't know about uh, the compound. <laughs> so I, since I was a little kid, this is one of, like, for lack of a better term, this is one of the earliest memories I remember thinking, like, I want to be committed to making this happen. Um, and it's kind of wavered in and out of how serious I was about it. And the last, pretty much since we started Joy Quota, like, it's just been kind of just filling up my chest more and more of, I want to start a community um, where we buy, you know, a 20 acre plot or something big enough and build however many homes on it. But it's got a racetrack. It's got a crazy swimming pool. It's got a skate park. It's got um, 
like a a rec center type building that has all kinds of stuff in it where everyone has their own house but we all get to do life together fun yeah. so like jt would have a car shop with a bunch of lifts and if anyone wanted to tinker on their car before the racetrack we go to jt's house and because he's the shop guy jt has to do with like do life with us we have to do right. life with him i was picturing myself being the woodworking guy but I'll find a different niche, uh, <laughs> it, but like that's kind of there the doesn't idea. have to just yeah. be one woodworking exactly, guy. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, but that's yeah, kind that's of the, the idea. Whole point, right? You can have a woodworking shop, and then you... I'm freed up to build yeah. whatever else. And like, Allie would have like an art studio, and like, just places where the community is absolutely individuals, right. but it's not individuals who stay that way. It's individuals who become much much better together. And I and. and I believe that life used to be more like that, where Same. people came together and, and they really kind of worked. You know, you had the blacksmith, you had, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. like you just went down and paid a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of barter system and a lot of yeah. things. And I, I think that's super exciting to potentially one day get back to that. And I, I wanted that for my family when I see my sons. I You know, I would love to have a 20-acre, 100-acre farm where they can all live and and my my wife's parents can live, and if my mom wants to come live, that's yeah. that's great. I I think that's fantastic. And our current situation with our wood shop, um, the gentleman that I work yeah, with there, we're, we're we're kind of doing that where we invite people in, and I teach their kids want to learn how how to woodwork, so I teach their kids, and he allows me to keep you know stay you know put my tools in their shop. So it really creates this yeah. kind of co-op. I, I, I teach, I get free rent, you know, and it's just yeah, really kind of comes together. big shout out to Bob. Because yeah. that's where you Huge. took me under your wing. And Huge. I learned so much about cabinetry and woodworking in general. Because yeah. I, I kind of dabbled because of who my dad is. But yeah. you actually know what you're doing <laughs> versus like you're not just like framing out a wall. Yeah, and his, I yeah. mean, and his son was in the wood shop with us yep. and is, is a phenomenal he builds beautiful stuff now. This is a phenomenal dude. And to though. me, that's that's just absolutely amazing for me to say because what I do doesn't necessarily matter, but everybody that I've taught along the way will build far greater things than I'll ever have the opportunity to do. And and I think that's where I get my joy is to see that occur and like to see you like when you built your bed. I'm like that's just super yeah. cool. Yeah. He's, t- he's thinking differently than I'm thinking and doing some really neat stuff. That and was only because of you. I can promise without a doubt. You showed me the wood shop where I just happened to be living nearby. So I was like, eh, I'll right. go dick around and you check know, it out. Check yeah. it out. And then I saw this cool wood and I'm like, I bet you I can make a bed. And then you were kind enough to let me borrow some tools. And before long, I'd built a bed from scratch, yep. having never done anything like it before. And it was exclusively because of that time I got to, it was probably like a, a full year yeah. that I spent monkeying around in your wood shop on the side. Super impressed, by the way. That was su- that was a it's awesome looking yeah. bed. It's still, it's still together, up. huh? Yes. You didn't, you didn't yeah. hit, the, hit the floor yet? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. And you did all right then. Uh, <laughs> No, but as a teacher, there can be no better feeling, I feel like. And that's kind of what I would hope to get some of out of Joy Quota is Mm -hmm. to, like, start to inspire kids or or anybody, really, to start having more fun in new ways and see the same thing where I never even thought about that cool thing you just did. And then we get to see that. Absolutely. Yeah, I was at a job site the other day and someone literally, for whatever reason, they saw, it was just like a little gangway, like a little two by 12 by 20 foot long gangway from like a four foot high ledge to the ground. And for whatever reason, their brain, (laughs) like the synapses just like forgot to fire. And they're like, dude, I can't make it down this. I cannot make it down this. And they just freaked out for five, six seconds until it caused enough of a scene that the entire job site got behind this one person. And they're like, you can do it. And all of a sudden, this weird moment happened (laughs) where they finally walk down this gangplank and it's all wobbly and stuff, of course. And they get to the bottom and you could tell, like, I will 
I will never know what it's like to be that happy. You're so <laughs> pumped right now. And I think that's such a, a good thought, Dylan. I hadn't put it even into my mind until you just now said it of that's kind of what we're hoping to do is share little moments like that. I've had a couple pe- people reach out um, just from listening to the podcast or seeing the videos. They're like, I wasn't going to go karaoke tonight. And then I saw your latest post and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I got to go. It's going to be awesome. Or, you know, um, someone reached out and they're like, honestly, I forgot that I was a decent enough driver that I could go into the mountains and drive. I had literally let myself get to a place where I felt so boxed in to my specific environment or situation that I forgot I could just drive to the mountains and enjoy the mountains. People in general are scared shitless about life. Yeah. Right? Walking the plank, driving the mountains, yep. driving in the snow, doing whatever. And, and fear, that fear completely stops them. I feel like fear and joy are so irrevocably linked. They're so tied together. Every time I felt tremendous fear on the other side of even trying, even if I didn't right. succeed, tons of joy. Even if it ended poorly, I was like, I sent it or I tried it or there there was at least some real moment of life where something significant happened because of it yeah. instead of just that scary and stopping. Yeah, and I think I mean, I'm not sure how how you learned that growing up or if you're just, you know, I don't know if it's a lack of intelligence that you're just too stupid and you just go for it. I don't know. <laughs> argument that, could be made. That, that, argument that, could that, be made. Definitely where I've been a few yes, times in my yes. life. Um, you know, long stories yeah. behind that. But um, oh, well, I'd like to, to hear at least yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come back to that. Yeah. That's your point. And then let's go. <laughs> no, I think um, I think ultimately that you just you just have to push through it. It's just the same thing like learning a bicycle trick that. You could literally sit on the top of the wave for freaking forever and never try that 360 and get that 50 bucks out of your dad. Yeah. Right? You just, you'd sit there forever. But sooner or later, you just got to give it a go. Well, and more importantly, he was eating shit time and time, time again. again. He and failed. And he never stopped sending it failed. full strength, not knowing what he was doing. What he was doing wrong, he was like, I'm, he never showed any signs of fear. He was, I'm, I'm, I got more going out to of, land this or die. <laughs> like, I got more out of that 360 moment than he ever got. It was worth, is way worth the 50 bucks because I literally thought about that for, I probably two years after that. I continually went back to it and said, the kid had enough guts after time after time after time oh, failing 30 crashes just, just to go and do it and and you know what i saw and the thing that i learned the most is I, I just i literally saw the change in his face when he did it yeah when he the look on his face when he was at the top and going for it i saw a change when he landed it because as he took off there was determination on his face and and i knew the minute he took off, it was happening. I just knew it. And I'm like, there was my 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm constantly inspired by little moments like that where I'm just like, yep. you kept sending. Like, I've been at job sites with people where they were, let's say, green. And they, they weren't 100% informed about what their task was. And they're not doing a great job. But they're not willing to settle for a poor quality job and they'll just sit there until it finally works works and looks right and even though it's kind of a weird moment and i'm off doing my own thing i'll take it sometimes every now and again it'll hit me like i i don't know if i would have hung in for that full hour and a half of trying to install Mm -hmm. that vanity or like whatever it is Mm -hmm. and that's such a a cool gift to be able to give your kids is I feel like you've specifically not just I mean specifically but very intentionally like you guys really intentionally made sure that they 
knew the value of determination. Mm-hmm. And I and, think that's such a gift. And the value of failure. Yeah. Because determination is one thing. You don't learn squat if you're just succeeding all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Failure is exactly where you, I mean, that is where the best learning resides. Yeah. And if you learn how to, you know, you've read the book, Fail Forward and all this, yeah. or however you want to put it, that learning, I, I can't tell you how many jobs I was on at the, at the 11th hour, I screwed the entire job up. <laughs> yep. And it took me till five o'clock in the morning in the middle of, you know, downtown Denver by myself in a building that if I walked outside, I'd get locked out of to get that damn job done. Yeah. You just had to be, you just had to do it and figure out a way. And, and boy, it, sometimes it requires some, some, some real uh, off engineering, if you will. But uh, I feel like that's where the creativity lies and that extra little spark of like, what's the, what's the right word? I'm, I'm almost thinking like pride, but not in like a, a bad way. Like all of my most prideful moments, like I rebuilt my truck after I rolled it. I used to have a pre-runner. I flipped it, destroyed the thing. <laughs> and I remember my dad was on the ladder because he was finishing the barn. Uh, he was like doing some weird stucco work or something. And I was just moping around the house because I was 19. I'd taken out the first loan I'd ever taken out in my entire life to get this car. And now it's wrecked. Rolled it. And he looked down on me. He's like, you're allowed to be sad. This fucking sucks. I'll never forget. We're for, this fucking sucks. But you're also not allowed to stay sad. Right. Let's figure out how we're going to make this better. So you tell me when you're ready and we'll go fix this thing. And maybe five hours later, I was like, all right, um, what are some options? Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do that. And literally in two to maybe three weeks, I had the whole thing put together. I'd learned how to weld. You cut that car in half, didn't you? I cut the car in half, welded a whole new body on it. Um, We reinforced the roll cage so that it wouldn't ever twist and bend the way that it did. Um, I had never done anything on a car pretty much except change the oil. I replaced (laughs) the whole front axle, the whole front knuckle, literally within a matter of weeks, maybe a month tops. I had this thing driving and better than when I bought it. It had a sunroof now and all this crazy stuff. And that was kind of the first time I I recognized the lesson of learning things the hard way is sometimes better because you only need the lesson once. Well, it sure in the hell sticks. Exactly. You (laughs) only need the lesson once. Right. Versus when... Do you think the... uh, Because we've talked a lot about determination and I've kind of been wondering like how do you define that necessarily and maybe it's hard work after failure or even because of failure or in maybe despite despite some failure I like knowing I I feel like like determination and faith are so you're like they're so late you need hard work for determination but But you you also have to believe that it will work I think I think the, the 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 story of of go out and succeed is bullshit. Yeah. I, I just think that's bullshit. I think you go out and fail as best you can and then succeed. I just, that I think that's the way that it happens. Now, there might be some people that go out there and just go and do it. You know, kudos to them. They're a hell of a lot smarter than I am. I mean, Elon Musk appears from the outside to have done to, that. To have done that. But I think that determination is is when you get punched in the face, you're still willing to fight. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's Rocky where... Rocky factor. Yeah, the <laughs> Rocky factor is that, you know, I just, I, I can't see straight and my nose is bleeding, but I'm still w- ready to go. Yeah. And I think, I, I to, so to your point, yeah, I think every single scenario that I've been in, it, it, it was a choice. Sit here and mope. Yeah, you're allowed to experience the sadness. You just Take can't it in. stay there. Take it I in. I want you to learn from this. Don't stay there. And and maybe I've stayed there for a couple of days or a week yeah. or however long. But sooner or later, I had to say, suck it up, fat boy. Let's get moving. Yeah. 
Life goes on. Life goes on. And I think that that determination has taken me to certain levels because I could have bowed out. I could have bowed out multiple times in school because, you know, I freaking failed grades and I did this and I did that and I was just a stupid ass kid. And I could have failed doing car stereos and did, you know, got fired. And I mean, there's just yeah. all these other things. And I continued to excel there. And I ended up being like the youngest, you know, certified installer in the country at the time. And I just kept going. I just, I didn't know any better. I said, you just can't stop me. But you have to love it, right? To be, because you wouldn't be determined <clears throat> to do something that you didn't love. I, I don't know if it's that you accidentally, that you have to, you know, love. I've done things that I haven't necessarily loved. I just had to do it to get to where I wanted to get to, you know. I, I think the determination is to know, like, maybe you love the end goal. But the shit you're dealing with right now sucks, but you got to get through it. Yeah, you know being I mean? able to see why what you're doing is important is important in in terms of where you're going. Yeah. That ex that extra little bit of vision to say like, wow, what I'm doing right now, like that's been a big part of me and my journey right now is like I'm not thoroughly stoked with my company right now mm. and where I'm at with that, but it's freed me up because it's paying me well enough and I'm safe enough there to where I have the ability to come do the joy quota as a result. In this, I'm, it's like relearning BMX. It's like rediscovering BMX. It's not relearning like no. that same crazy fire within me where I'm like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing that I felt when I was 15 when I first yeah. started really getting into BMX. And it was that small shift of thinking of like, even if where I'm at nine to five isn't where I'm going, it's affording me the opportunity to actually get where I'm going. Yeah. Which is, and I think that's it as I think that you, you, you kind of put in so that, you know, you you got the end goal in mind and you got to do some of the shit work to get through it. So I think, I, you know, I love being a woodworker. I love having great tools. I love building that beautiful piece. But, you know, 90% of it is, you know, sweeping the shop and and yeah. and doing shit work so that one day I can look at this beautiful piece. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's just a give to the end. And, and even in my job today, I mean, I take shit. I mean, I'm in a corporation. You know, everybody's like, what have you done for me lately? What did you <laughs> sell today? Yeah. I take that day in, day out. They're just sh- shots coming off the bow. And I finally say, you know what? My, m- what I truly love is to say that in the end, it's the number one selling community in the country or the number one selling team in Colorado. That what? Th- that's the joy that I take. It's that little tiny snapshot in time where I can say, I did it. Yeah. And it's probably more feeding my ego than anything. I have. I mean, yeah. I can't well, yeah. but I, uh, well, it's, say what it is. I'm never going to complain against someone having an ego. Yeah. <laughs> I have to believe that some amount of ego is good. Or I'm But fine. I also say that in the midst of all of that, I've taught people how to do things. They are now succeeding. They're doing things. They look at me like, hey, I really appreciate it. I get texts. I can't believe that I get to be a part of this or thank you for mm-hmm. letting me spend years with you in the wood shop. You know, just it, there's so many different things that I get to say, you know what? Suc- that's success. That's 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 what brings me joy. That's what makes me happy. And and all that shit work was just it was what I had to pay in. 